Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm sharing with you a sewing tutorial for how you can make a slip cover for an outdoor couch cushion. Now this is specifically like the back one that you would lean up against, not the square one on the bottom. So keep that in mind. I will have a tutorial up for the bottom cushion coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, but I do want to apologize because this is going to be a vertical video. I recorded this for Instagram and um, so I have it in a different format. However, I will make sure that the next one with the couch cushion bottoms cover, um, that I will do that one in a format that'll be better for YouTube. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you the before picture, I'm going to show you the after, and then we're going to get started on um, everything you need to do to make yourself a slipcover for your outdoor couch. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've taken all the measurements of this pillow. This is actually the top, like the back cushion of the couch. And there's six of these and there's six of the bottom cushions. Um, I'm doing one just to um, make sure my pattern works okay, and then I'll do all the other ones. So this pillow actually has like a boxed corner here. So what I have to do is create a pattern that looks something like this. So I took the measurement across the top and then the measurement across the bottom from seam to seam on the sides and put those you know, wrote those down and then figured out that I'm going to need to cut out an inch and a half notch for the bottom. So let me show you the bottom. So the bottom of it actually has the seam going through the middle of the cushion and it has this boxed cornered edge. So this is where I'm going to cut out this notch on my pattern and be able to wrap the fabric all the way around and keep that bottom seam so that it's hidden. And I'm actually using some craft paper. Um, this is from Hobby Lobby, I think. But it has a grid on the back, so it's going to make um, drawing out my pattern so much easier. Here's what I have so far for my pattern. So because of this boxed corner, the bottom end of this cushion cover is actually going to be wider than the top. So I have that plus my 2 inch cutout that allows for a seam allowance. Seam on this side. So if you are ever making a pattern for something, find yourself some gridded paper. <laughs> so much easier you guys I finished sewing on one side of my zipper this is actually a zipper tape um, which means that it comes a big long piece i think it's like five yards long is what i get of the zipper part and then there's a little bag that comes with these poles so you cut it to the length you want it and you put the zipper pull on and um, it makes it easier for sewing plus um it's it's better in the long run for me because I go through a lot of zippers because I can just cut it the length I want it. Um, but what I'm using is a special zipper foot on my machine. And this part here is adjustable so I can sew on this end or this end. But it lets my needle get really close to the zipper. Um, in this case though, you'll notice I'm not actually sewing that close to the zipper. Uh, because I want to be able to create the little flap. And because this is not an invisible zipper, it needs room to be able to slide along that zipper. Instead, what I'm doing is using the width of the zipper foot here as my seam allowance. And so I just laid my zipper out right side of the zipper to the right side of my fabric. And I actually, just for added stability, because I know this is going to be zipped and unzipped a bunch as they wash it, I just folded over a little scrap piece of the same fabric and I'm tacking it down on the ends and um, it gives me a little extra something to sew through and helps to secure that zipper a little better. So you can see I just ran a stitch all the way down along the zipper and now I'm getting ready to add the second side. On each of my uh, pieces here I have surged the edge of the fabric that's going against the zipper. Because it's outdoor fabric it isn't really necessary because it's a polyester so it's not going to really unravel or fray but I feel like um, it just kind of gives it a more finished look for me. Okay now I have my two sides right side together and you can see the notches here on the corners match up that means I've got it going the right direction. This is the un 
attached side of the zipper so that is going to actually go here and what I like to do is as I just line everything up I want to make sure that the top um, edges of these boxed cutout pieces line up together because that's going to give me the polished finished corner that I really really want so I'm just going to line those up and then double stitch at the end here go all the way down with that seam allowance for the size of my zipper foot and then double stitch at the back and around where the actual zipper pull is you want to make sure your zipper is completely out of the way because you'll break your needle but also like it doesn't really want to lay all that flat for my presser foot to go along the side of it so I'm gonna sew up to here and then I can unzip my zipper a little bit and go past my presser foot so that I can get it out of the way and then just continue sewing all the way down. Now that it's all sewn, I can just come through with my scissors and I'm just gonna trim off the excess zipper and clip my threads. The good thing is that this is a nylon zipper, it's not actually metal. The zipper pull is metal, um, but this is not, so it's easy to cut through just with regular scissors. And here's what it looks like with that zipper all the way attached. Um, now, what I want to do is I need to close off the edge otherwise the zipper will just slide off the end and I want to move this outside fabric in a little bit I gave myself extra space on my pattern to be able to do this and um, so I want uh, I need to be able to hide that zipper so um, the next step is going to be closing up these ends okay here's the finished edge of my zipper and what I want to do to hide that zipper is I'm actually going to match up. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. I'm going to match up this corner cutout. And then it kind of leaves this space here. I don't know if you can really see that. So what I'm going to do is use my zipper foot and just sew right along here along the edge of the zipper. I can feel the zipper. Um, with my fingers and I can kind of line it up along that edge of the zipper foot and I want to sew in about an inch or so and just do a bunch of back stitching because this is where the strain from that zipper opening and closing is going to be and I don't want that to tear so I'm gonna go do that real quick here's that stitching that I did and here's what it looks like when you open it up you can see that it just adds this seam right here that closes off the end of the zipper. Now my zipper technically could still slide out through there. So after I do the other side, I'll show you how we keep that from happening. Uh, ironing board. And this is the end of the zipper where I sewed um, that zipper kind of closed a little bit. And I'm just gonna iron it down, but I'm pinching the fabric so that it meets in the middle of that zipper. That way I can hide it. Um, the one thing about this fabric, so it is outdoor fabric, which means it's water repellent and fairly stain resistant. Um, it doesn't like to iron. So I am going to iron it the best I can, but it's not going to really stay. So after I give it a good ironing, I'm going to go, come back and just put some pins in to hold it in place. It is all pinned up and I just kind of staggered my pins along um, the whole length of my zipper here. And what I'm gonna do is actually take it to my sewing machine and sew a big rectangle around my zipper. So I'm gonna start here a little bit past this opening, maybe about a quarter of an inch, and then about a quarter of an inch down from that folded edge, I'm gonna sew all the way down one side, go to the other side, go a quarter of an inch past where the stitching begins. So there, and I usually back stitch a couple times over there because that's what's actually gonna keep the zipper from sliding all the way out and then go along the other side back to where I started. Um, then clip your threads and then your zipper part is done. That's the hardest part of this whole thing. I'm just working my way around the zipper. Um, I just moved my zipper to the back because um, it was in the way. I can't really see it back there. Um, just be careful as you sew because you've got all these pins in here. It's really easy to poke yourself, especially if you're sewing something big like this. So um, I actually roll up this end so that it fits in the throat of my sewing machine. It just makes it a little bit easier 
and I'm just going to go ahead and finish sewing this rectangle around my zipper. The next step to finishing these covers is to make sure my zippers open at least halfway. Then I'm going to fold the right sides together and line up my edges. So I am not worried right now about this area, but I am going to line up and pin or clip all the way around here and go ahead and sew all of that with a half inch seam allowance. On this zippered end of my boxed corner here, I'm just using some small sewing scissors and I'm snipping through um, this top layer that we folded over on top of the zipper and the actual zipper itself, but not the front of our cover because that we need to stay there so we have something to sew it to. But by cutting off, you know, about between a quarter of an inch to a half an inch, we're reducing that bulk in our seam allowance so that when we flip this corner right side out, it's going to end up um, a nice straight edge, not this bulky corner that won't really lay flat because you've got the zipper in there. So I just went ahead and snipped those edges and then clipped straight across. So now when I sew, I will be able to catch the edge of that zipper to keep it within that seam allowance. However, it's only going to have like this much past the seam allowance, so it won't be big and bulky. Our next step is to actually uh, create this boxed corner. So I lined up the center seam on the side of my pillow with the center seam of the zipper on the bottom of the pillow and then um, opened up that seam allowance on the side just to reduce that bulk again and then pull it straight across your corner should line up pretty close and give yourself like that 45 degree um, angle fold there and I clip mine down here so that it's away from my seam allowance because I'm going to take this to my sewing machine behind me and just sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance straight across I backstitch a couple times in the center where the zipper is and then backstitch at the beginning and backstitch at this end too here's how that finished seam is looking um, it's, actually, it's actually pretty straight across but it wants to fold on me so um, it's got that half inch there's that little bit of zipper that ended up in my seam allowance and um, the back edge is folded over and you can come back in and trim this extra fabric on the edge of your seam allowance but I actually just leave it I it doesn't make a difference in this particular cover because um, the fabric is not super heavy, um, so I'm just going to leave it and I can turn it out and uh, you can see how it looks in just a second. Here's that finished uh, box corner. So gives it a professional look. It keeps it nice and straight and flat. And uh, if you've got a pillow like the ones that I've been recovering, this is a, an easy way to do it. And this is the actual finished corner here on my pillow. You can see the zipper opens nicely and it can now be taken off to be washed where the other cover was sewn onto this pillow. So hopefully you guys liked this little tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, let me know if you want to see more sewing tutorials like this.